everyone, Jessica here with Rebecca, aka Car Chick. We are here at Girls Garage and we've just been having a blast. Uh, we've been trying to do these quick and simple demos to really help women better understand their cars. Becca's slogan, know your car. Um, and so today we are sitting here with a timing belt. Now we just covered drive belts, so make sure you check out that video, but this looks a little intimidating to me. It has so many more kind of ridges to the belt, the gears, like everything just looks more intricate than the drive belt. Um, so tell us about this. What I know is that this is internal. This is inside of the engine. That's correct. So it's, <laughs> this particular setup is going to be underneath a timing cover. And we are talking about a timing belt. There are also vehicles that have timing chains. So this is just about the belt, the okay. timing belt process. So the reason that it looks more complicated, it's a lot more complicated. So in this particular example, again, we're using generalities because some cars have one camshaft, some have two, some have four. Many, uh -huh. many different. So this is a two, a twin cam engine, all right? So we have two camshafts here. Okay. And that's, I think I should step back and talk about shafts. Yes. Because that may I've be, heard them before. I have no idea what they are. It <laughs> may be useful to understand just simply how an engine works. Everything in life is about timing, and particularly in a vehicle, right? Yes. So we have, we're just going to talk about the two basic shafts, and I'll just take one of each, the camshaft and the crankshaft. Mm -hmm. The crankshaft is the one that when you start the car, it has momentum. It's going to start the momentum this going. This one? Yes. Okay. But to make the engine operate properly, we have to have the top of the engine and the bottom of the engine in accord, in time. Yeah. And that's exactly what this does. So the camshaft and the crankshaft have to use a belt or a chain to keep it in time. Okay. And I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's little nubs yeah. on the base so of that. So this is not smooth like the drive belt, not at all. No. So this actually is to fit into these gears. Yeah. And actually underneath the crankshaft boy, there's gears as well. So we want the gears to line up. I mean exactly. The <laughs> it looks very exact. <laughs> it's very exact. And the reason we want that to happen is so that combustion happens appropriately, so it has to be in time. And we'll talk okay. about combustion in another segment, okay. but that's the basics of it, okay? So in this example, we have two camshafts, okay. and then we have the crankshaft and the belt's going around. And then in this example, we have the water pump inside underneath the timing cover. Okay. So we're actually driving the water pump with the timing belt, which okay. is, to me, very interesting because it wasn't always that way. It was typically external. And then, um, what do we have over there? This Jessica? is a hydraulic tensioner. Oh. So this is a very interesting <laughs> device because, I don't know if you can see this, if I can push it. Yes, you can. That yeah. it's loosening the belt, right? So this is kind of the last component to go on. When we do a timing belt job, we, we set that hydraulic tensioner at the very last, last moment. Typically, it's almost like a um, grenade. We take the pin out and <laughs> it goes up and keeps it tight. Okay. But we have another little device right here, which is called an idler, typically. And so there was also the idler uh, on the drive belt. That's and right. so you have the two here to kind of keep that. I'm learning something. You are. <laughs> the same as our bodies. Again, we want to keep everything in balance. And yes. So we need two sides of it. So we have balance tension is here, key. and we have an idler here. And in some cases, you might have two idlers or four idlers or one mechanical tensioner and then a hydraulic tensioner. So again, we're talking basics. Okay. Um, and sometimes you might have other things driven there. There might be a secondary belt in some of the older Hondas we would have. It's called a balance shaft. And so it's like a timing belt, but it's called a balance shaft belt. Okay. So, so many different choices. A, yeah. A lot of, and that was one of my first questions to Becca was, if you have a drive belt, do you have a timing belt? If you have a timing belt, do you have a serpentine belt? There's so many belts, and so it's really specific to every car. Um, but it I is. did learn that if you have both a timing belt and a drive belt, this is parallel. That's correct. They're one's behind the other. So the drive belt would be external, and the timing belt would be internal. Mm -hmm. A couple more things I want to talk about is can you imagine that inside an engine, not only do we have combustion occurring, but we have many fluids running around in there. So we have oil, and we have coolant, all different types of yes. things. So underneath the camshafts uh -huh. and underneath the crankshaft, uh -huh. there is a seal. So this is called a camshaft seal. Behind this sprocket, 
is a seal for the end of that shaft. This sprocket is separate from the camshaft. It sits onto the end of the camshaft. Okay. And so in between there, in between the shaft and the sprocket, is a seal. So the same with the crankshaft. We need to change that seal when we're doing this timing belt job. This is one of my number one questions that people will ask me. Okay. I'm going to do the timing belt. I'm just going to change the belt. No. no. Please don't do that. <laughs> the, because it's typically a lot of labor. And the seals are also rubber. Yes. And, and the, rubber. What that we learned in the previous episode is it, it you know, it, it, it cracks, cracks or it might eventually. oxidize. Yes. And because there's hot oil behind this, yeah. it's going to kind of, with heat, you yeah. know, expand and then contract. And so we're going to want to change the seals behind here. Okay. The seals underneath the crankshaft. Okay. And also, there is a gasket at the water pump. Mm. If you have a water pump underneath your tiny belt, please right. change that. Would you like to spend many hundreds of dollars to go back in? No. To do that? And no. this is something we said in the other episode, but I want to reiterate, and this is just a very valuable tip: is when you go in to get your timing belt changed, ask them to check every component in there, all of the seals and the water pump, because that could break weeks later and you you find yourself back at the auto store spending hundreds of dollars again. Yes, so because just get it all done in one fell soup. And then another tip that I just want to constantly tell people is ask for the old parts. Yes. Ask for the old parts. Hold your mechanic accountable. Yeah, accountable to bringing out the old part and showing that this is in fact what he or she switched out. Right. <laughs> so one of the interesting things if you do that if you're not sure if you're a mechanic and, and you have um, not a long-term relationship with them, they're yeah. not going to give you the wrong parts typically. But besides yeah. that, you can learn what they did. Yeah. One of the other things I want to talk about is any bearing. Any. So remember I said this was a sprocket? Yes. And the crankshaft has a sprocket also. It's, it's actually, um, it could... It's, it's a sprocket, it actually looks like this. It's just black plastics. I don't know if you can see it as much as you can see this. Yeah. Those don't need to be changed, but anything that has a bearing, the idler, okay. tensioner, and again, if you have a hydraulic tensioner and a mechanical tensioner, change them. Okay, so these won't really give out. No. These are solid, they're good, so if, will any mechanic ever say to change these? No, not in <laughs> a timing, not. not in a timing belt. Okay. If you're in a timing chain, right. completely different segment. Right. Yes, they would tell you to, but anything, the belt will not hurt them and typically will not hurt the crankshaft rocket. Okay, great. And one thing about the water pump, I actually, so this is part of the cooling system. Yes. Correct? So I had a problem with mine and I think I had to get it changed, but my car overheated while I was on a weekend getaway, so I had to be towed back from Ojai, 80 miles. Um, problem with the water pump, my coolant was just also a hose had cracked, so it was just a disaster, but just a fun fact that uh, the water pump is part of the cooling system. Yes, it is. So very important. Um, okay, anything else that we should know about the timing belt? Oh, one thing. To get to this, to yeah. the timing belt, typically you have to remove oh, okay. the serpentine or drive belt. Okay, so this is a much bigger, more costly fix. This Safe is a very expensive say. job, yes. Okay. So. Well, it's time for me to do, I think, to do mine. <laughs> well, when you do that, my suggestion is, since the part is off, the drive belt or serpentine belt, change it. Do There's it all? There's no labor. Okay. There's no labor. You have all to remove right. it to get to this. Okay. All right. Well, that's a good tip, and I think that'll be one of my next big fixes that I will have to just do because I think it's time. <laughs> awesome. Alrighty, thanks guys for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.